Here is what too many Christians fall into the trap of doing. Instead of making the decision, we want to be told what to do. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. So recently someone had contacted me and they asked a question. Sometimes this happens, right, what people ask. And what they had said was um, they were going to go on a trip. They were invited to go on a trip with some friends, uh, maybe some family. And yet they, um, in the time of coronavirus, they were like, I don't know if I should do this because it's, you know, it's potentially dangerous. Uh, maybe I shouldn't, Maybe, but I really want to, which is all fine. That's like a normal thing that people can have, well, that we all have to figure out right now. But one of the things they were saying is they kept getting um, these signs. The signs were like, go on the trip. Like they would read something. It would be like, take a trip, you know, or they would, they'd turn on the TV and it'd be a commercial for like, you know, go on vacation. Um, they kept getting what they considered to be signs that, that would say, go on the trip. And then they thought, you know, I kind of do feel a lot of peace when it, when it comes to the idea of like going on this trip. And you know, I have this sense of peace. But then what happened was they said, I just started second guessing myself and thought maybe I shouldn't do this. Um, and so then it was this back and forth kind of a battle of like, but there's these signs that go on the trip and there's this feeling of peace, but I don't feel this peace anymore. And what do I do? And they, they even had a great amount of self-awareness where they said, I am kind of your classic overthinker. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? But it was a great question. I thought this is so good because here is what too many Christians fall into the trap of doing. Um, we fall into the trap. Um, instead of making the decision, we want to be told what to do. And again, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Doing God's will is everything. It's everything. It's, it's, it's the point of life is doing the Father's will. That is it. Um, and so every, it should be the preoccupation of every Christian to do the Father's will. Like every one of us should say, that's, yeah, that's the goal of my life is to do the Father's will. Yes. At the same time, I think the anxiety a lot of us experience over making decisions about the future has more to do with getting out of the responsibility of having to make a decision and maybe less to do about doing the Father's will, be that as it may. When it comes to signs, what do we do? Well, we know that God has spoken and continues to speak through signs. Just like we had a video on dreams. God has spoken through dreams. He can continue to speak through dreams. Yeah, ton, totally. Something to keep in mind. He doesn't often speak through signs. He doesn't often speak through dreams. Um, for the most part, God speaks with clarity. Well, he always, he always speaks with clarity and he has already spoken many ways. So he's, what he's given us, revelation, which is sacred scripture and sacred tradition. He's given us the magisterium of the church. So there's this source of where God has already spoken that he doesn't need to give us any more signs about his will for our lives. Because if it, anything we want to do or, or maybe I should do this thing contradicts sacred scripture, sacred tradition, or the magisterium, the teaching of the church, then we know, oh, that's not, that's not him. That's not the voice of God. That's not a sign from God that I should be doing this kind of thing. We know that God always speaks in clarity. So here's a person who says, okay, there's kind of fuzzy messages. I turn on the TV and there's a commercial like, go on a trip. Or there's, you know, the, I read a line in a book and it said, go on a trip. Okay, that's, that's fuzzy. That's a fuzzy sign. Because it's not saying, hey, Joe, you should go on this sign. Like, I'm an angel sent from God to tell you this. Like, that's a fuzzy sign. And we know this, that God always speaks in clarity. God always speaks in clarity. So I don't have to wait for a sign. I don't have to kind of, if I, even if I cock my head and like squint really hard, then I can kind of see that this is a sign. No, that's a fuzzy sign. God speaks in clarity. The second part was not just fuzzy signs, was my feeling of peace. I really felt peace in moving forward, but then I don't feel peace anymore. That's relying on our feelings a bit too much. Feelings, as I mentioned before in a, in a previous video as well, uh, one of my friends, Dean, Dean had said uh, this line I thought was so powerful that our feelings don't reveal the truth about reality. Our feelings don't reveal the truth about God. They merely reveal the truth about our hearts or they merely reveal the condition of our hearts. So if I feel at peace, then yeah, okay, my heart is at peace for whatever reason. If I feel anxious, then my heart is anxious. It, it doesn't necessarily, again, reveal the truth about this decision doesn't necessarily reveal the truth about reality. It does reveal how I'm doing with that, which pay attention to it. It's a factor, but it's not, it can't be the factor. And that sense of peace that, I mean, there are a lot of people who are sinning in really significant ways who feel very, very peaceful about the fact that they're sinning in various ways. And there's a lot of people who are actually like, no, they're, they're pursuing the Lord, but just maybe their temperament is a little more anxious, a little more worried, a little more high strung. And that doesn't reveal anything about the nature of reality or the nature of God or where he's calling them, 
it does reveal the condition of their heart. Okay, so here's the person. I have these signs, but they're fuzzy and they're based on feelings. And that's when we cut through this and realize this. I want to look to the signs, the signs or the feelings to make the decision for me. Now, not always. Again, this person is, is, have, has a good heart and wants to do what God wants, but is missing the one critical factor. And that is this last piece, which is you have to make the decision. Like you just have to make the decision. A disciple is a decision maker. A disciple is a decision maker. A disciple of Christ is someone who, who chooses. I mean, think about this. Every one of the apostles. Here's Matthew. Come follow me. He has to decide. Here's Simon and, and Andrew. Jesus, come follow me. Yeah, they have to decide. Here's the rich young man. S sell everything. Give it to the poor. Then come follow me. He has to decide one way or another. You have Nicodemus who visits Jesus at night. At some point, Nicodemus, if you're going to become a disciple of Jesus, you're going to have to be a decision maker. Not based off of a, a fuzzy feeling or a, a squinty sign, but based off of what? The facts. And that's what we do. Again, when it comes to decision making, we have to gather the data, seek counsel, weigh all the options and the consequences, and then decide. Because this person was making the decision. What about going on vacation? traveling during the time of coronavirus. That's risky. I mean, it's just, it's risky. So the recognition is, what do I do? I look at the data, gather all that data. I have to think about this. I come and I say, oh, I think I'm gonna flip a coin. Like, no, gather the data, seek counsel, talk to people about this, people who know, and then um, also weigh the risks. The reality is we live in a world that is dangerous. And to make any of those decisions, it's going to come with a price. I know that not, about, not all of us are really good at decision making. Sometimes we put it off and put it off and put it off. Sometimes you might be the kind of person who makes a decision at the drop of the hat. You like look at the options and say, boom, boom, that's what I'm going to choose. And some of us are the opposite of that. But to make the decisions is to take responsibility. God gave us an intellect. He gave us a will. He wants us to use that intellect and then put it to work by choosing, by making a decision, knowing that that merely looks like us taking responsibility for what he's given us to be stewards of. He's given us uh, this chance to be stewards of our lives, the people around us. We're taking responsibility for those decisions. Of course, at the end of the day, if um, you realize you've made a decision, you started down a course, and it's like it's, you, it's really clear you need to change course, well then change course. Not based off of a feeling, but based off of facts. God's given us freedom. He's given us a responsibility and we have to choose. We have to use that responsibility. We have to use that freedom to choose. And we know that every decision risks something. Every decision costs something. But so does not deciding. That also risks something and not deciding also costs something. So as we said many times here, um, what has God spoken if he hasn't spoken about this thing? All right, gather the data, seek counsel, weigh the options, examine the risks, all the consequences, and then choose. If you want more about this, we have this book with Bobby and Jackie Angel called Pray, Decide, and Don't Worry. It might be helpful for you and for um, anyone, else, anyone else who's in that situation. Anyways, for all of us here to Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.